Adam, let me show you something. All right, right. let's see it. Let's see it. Just watch. All right, all right. All right. All right. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for ready? it. Give it to us. Adam, I just walked the amount of yardage that Clemson had last night. Clemson time. had all Rushing. last time. How many, how many total yards was that, Clark? That was two. Two total yards, yards in Bank of America Stadium Woo. in Charlotte last night. How about them? Welcome, everybody, to Row 60, a Georgia football podcast. My name is Clark Gaines, and alongside me is Adam Thornton. He is my friend, right. my cousin, and a DGD, and one heck, one heck of a driver, people. Thank you, Clark. Yeah. I try. We are, I try. as you could probably tell right now, our voices are shot. They are gone. Yep. Yep, Clark, I tell you, this morning when I woke up, I couldn't I couldn't even get out what I am now. And I, that's why we recorded this the day after the game where everything's just still fresh on our mind, where we still are just feeling feeling good. We could recount the events of the uh, yesterday. And I tell you what, yesterday you just felt like you were floating on a cloud throughout the whole day. It couldn't have went any more perfect. There was some crispness in the air. It felt like a very nice fall afternoon mm -hmm. and night in Charlotte, North Carolina. A lot of red and black in that stadium, yep. Clark. A lot of red and black. A lot of the peach. Our friends over at Peach State Pride had a lot of hats represented and shirts and tire. Y'all go check them out at peachstatepride.com. And man, it was just a, it was an amazing night, Clark. I can't get over it yet. And I'm like, you know, I'm trying to just get some energy going because, yeah. you know, we got week two coming up. Mm -hmm. And, but I mean, we gave it 100% last night as fans. We did. I tell you, there was one lady who thought I had money on the game. One man, that was a very intoxicated man sitting in front of us, looked over at my wife and said, Boy, I bet he's something to live with. You know, <laughs> yeah, you have to put up a lot living with him, don't you? <laughs> so, I mean, I, you oh, know, man. showed out, but uh, it, was, it was worth it. That's what you live for, yeah. man. Yeah, That's I, what you live for when you love these these natural highs that we got, right? Absolutely. There. Love it. Absolutely. Love it. I was uh, up there, literally, the last no. section, the last section in, uh, in the, se uh, sorry, the last row in the section. No. And uh, just screaming, and we got to a point, you know, because normally on third down, you know, everybody's getting into it. They're shouting, they're screaming, they're they're yelling their favorite vowel, whether no. it's a <laughs> a or o, oh, right? So then That's I started right. going. Then I, I started <laughs> since it was sponsored by Duke's uh, mayonnaise. Yeah. I started going mayo. <laughs> And it really got the crowd, you know, <laughs> juice. So. I bet it did get yeah. it juice because that's what I mean. That every time my favorite is when it will get a good third down. I get yeah. a rise. Yeah. I, I get a go get them at them. Yeah, you know, Adam yes. Anderson, go get them or a, let's hunker down D and yep. start barking. But speaking of mayonnaise, Clark, one of the most disgusting <laughs> things I've ever witnessed in many many live football games that I've been to. Uh, it was last night at Bank of America Stadium when they had two college kids, one from Clemson, one from Georgia, uh -huh. that looked like that they were eating a full big old bowl of commercial size yeah, tub of mayonnaise. I mean, just hammering it down. And I <laughs> just sat there, and my, I mean, my, my stomach was already in knots with nerves because <laughs> yeah. during that point of the game, it was you know, it was just uh, back and forth, back and forth, defensive struggle or the defensive struggle with the offense could go anywhere. So I don't know, it was awful. It was awful. Oh, it man. was awful. Mm. Well, mm. despite all what that. What a night. What a what, night. What a night. Golly, that's one that, you know, mm. we're going to look back on yeah. a few years from now and just be like, man, that what a heck of a football yeah. game that was. And it was a lot different than I think both of us expected it to be. I think my score prediction was 35-31. Mm -hmm. Yours was 34-28. Yeah, it was 32-28. That's right. So <laughs> we, we were way know, off. We were, in, we were in Vegas. We wouldn't uh, – uh, no. we were, if we put money on that, we sure wouldn't have had it. No. But uh, we'll talk about this game. Uh, that's kind of what's – up ahead, uh, we're going to talk about the Clemson game, recap it, go into what we liked, what we didn't like, mm -hmm. um, and then we will then talk about the UAB game coming up this Saturday, 3.30. Uh, we'll get into that and a lot, lot more, I'm sure. So um, this game, I tell you, Adam, is is a big program-defining game for the University of Georgia. Right. And I think it's very important for Kirby Smart and for his morale and for the people out there saying, you know, Kirby can't win the big no. game. He just did, people. He did, and he did it. He did it 
uh, shutting down Dabo Sweeney, holding him to three points, which, by the way, three. that is the least amount of points Dabo Sweeney has ever scored as a head coach. Yeah, man, this is, he's in his 13th year at Clemson, won two national titles. Three points is always scored last night. And like you said, Clark, the least he has scored, him or Tony Elliott, in an offense over the past few years has been one of the top offenses in college football. And their style and their system has been the standard. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that, that, just a, an amazing feat. Um, man, I tell you, it was just uh, – you, you didn't see that coming. No. I did not think it would be 10-3. to 3. What if somebody would have told you you're going to go into that stadium tonight and there's not going to be one offensive touchdown score? <laughs> I, I would have looked crazy. at them like they're crazy. Yeah. Like, you've never watched a game of football in your <laughs> life. How's oh, that going to be the gosh, case? Yeah. But, uh, you know, and going back with Kirby getting this win and talking about a big win that, you know, it's kind of like a, just a monkey being lifted off his back or yeah. elephant lifted off his back. Something uh, to it's that a big effect. difference, though. <laughs> yes. A monkey's about, you know, 100 pounds of elephants. I don't know. Well, man, I, my mind's just shy. Oh, it's, it's all good, what. though. But the elephant lifted off his back. <laughs> and, and the fact that, uh, you know, we, we, we mentioned this, and uh, I think it was a season preview show. He is now beating Lincoln Riley, Brian Kelly two times, Dabo Sweeney to add to that list, oh. and Jimbo Fisher. So mm -hmm. the elite of the elite head coaches, um, that group outside of Saban, he's undefeated against. Them. He is. So he should be in that. I mean, I 100% think he needs to be right in the mix of all them as yeah. the elite of the elite coaches. Uh, the game plan was just phenomenal on the defense mm -hmm. side of the football. Give props to Dan Landon, the defense coordinator. Called an unbelievable game. I really don't think he missed on the defensive call. Oh. Did not. I mean – had the right amount of just um, the blitz packages set up. And, I mean, it, it Uangale like, was just she yeah. running for his life all night. Yep. Seven sacks. Right. Mm. Golly. And we're going to talk about our defense, but let's first, Adam, go to, and talk about our offense. You know, a lot of people, I've already seen it on Facebook, on Twitter, yep. on uh, just all sorts of other places that our offense is slow. They're stagnant still. What's going on? We need to remind our fan base, Adam, and we're going to, we're going to stay positive about our, our offense because we don't have about four receivers who, by the way, would probably start at any other uh, Division One school in the nation right now. Yeah, um, we we're, we're we got about four guys who aren't a hundred percent. I think two of them didn't even dress out, huh. and then you, you've also got Darnell Washington, Big O. Yeah, yeah. Out. I mean, you, you look at it, Clark, um, th th I'm, and I'm glad we're talking about this because this is one of the main things I wanted to touch on mm -hmm. after looking at message boards last night yep. and, and seeing social media people just complaining about the offense. Like, just enjoy the win. <laughs> exactly. We beat a number three ranked Clemson team. Yep. Enjoy it, man. Yeah. Like, like, let's not be negative about it. Let's, I mm -hmm. mean, I, obviously everybody and their brother knows if the offense performs like they did last night continuously throughout the season there's not a championship caliber football team but the beautiful thing about it is there's 11 football games to go and you get better each and every week every time you step on that practice field or every time you go in that film room and you watch film and you evaluate in between games you get better and our schedule couldn't set up any better yeah. for that to, uh, to, to trend to continue with who we've got coming up right. next but people need to understand what happened on offense last night Obviously, you talked about the injuries. I don't think Kiaris Jackson was 100%, no, obviously. Uh, Jermaine, Jermaine Burton, Burton wasn't was 100%. It. You had guys like uh, Lad McConkey out there, uh, Donnie Mitchell, uh, Jalen Johnson, who's a walk-on, mm -hmm. Marcus Rosemey, and Brock Bowers, who are either true freshmen or redshirt freshmen. And really, you have an offensive line who, uh, when Tate Ratledge goes down in the first um, – yeah. The first series right there, the offense series, that changes up. You have yeah. to reshuffle the line, and yeah. he's out for the year, unfortunately, is what uh, early reports are saying, having to have foot surgery. So, really, and people are like, well, Monkin needs to stretch the ball downfield. Well, you didn't have any receivers out there that's going to stretch the ball right. downfield. Or an All-American defensive line like Clemson's mm -hmm. not going to give JT Daniels time to step back in the pocket and get it downfield. Yeah. So that's why you saw some of them quick out routes, really just trying to get our guys the ball in space to make something happen yeah. and, and uh, nickel and dime them down the field because it just wasn't, it w wasn't there. Mm -hmm. It was not – there against a very, very dang good Clemson defense. Yeah. And I went back and I watched the film today, um, not the coach's film. I would love to have that that view. But uh, I, I could tell that their defense, man, they're a lot like us. In yeah. a lot of ways, that front seven, man, they fly to the ball. And, you know, people say, well, run it outside, blah, blah, blah. These guys yeah. are quick, y'all. And it takes – 
it takes some uh, perimeter blocking, which, right. you know, I, I think we struggled a little bit last night because we do have those receivers um, who, you know, they, they're not necessarily starters, all of them. Uh, they they struggled, though, blocking on the perimeter. So when we did get it out to James Cook um, or, or Zeus or whoever, and we try to get them off the edge, uh, off the tackle, it was tough because those guys, those d- defensive uh, linebackers for Clemson, that they got there. Oh, they, they got there, Clark. And I mean, that, it's a very talented unit. Brent Venables, like we've talked about, is one of the most elite defensive mm-hmm. minds in the game. And I mean, he didn't miss either on their uh, side of the football. That was, was that, that. That's the game I love right there, yeah. man. And it, that was grown man football. Nice. It was who's going to be the most physical team, who's going to hold up the most, have the most stamina to, to play all four quarters of football and make the less mistakes and capitalize on them. Mm. And what happened with the offense last night is. What I was proud of was at the end of the game, Clark, I felt like we wore down that Clemson defense enough to – when we needed to, to move the ball and get first down yardage, then I'll be dang, we got it there at the end. And I, I, I've never in my life tried to do so much mental math in my head to figure <laughs> out, well, you know, we're, we're at first, second down right now, and then try to get the clock. We got like – we got maybe like 257 <laughs> seconds. I mean, let's let's talk about when the game – And, the, then, and uh, then you got to convert that clock to minutes. Starts and then minute and like, how, when can we get to victory formation? I've never in my life – and I'm just – everybody around me in the – like the seats, I'm just trying – people think I'm crazy. It was like, how many more plays do we got? Let, let, you know, what <laughs> – how many – you know, trying to get somebody to talk yeah, with me. Yeah, like, we yeah. got to hurry up and get the victory yeah. formation out right. there. And uh, – because I was just so nervous. Until the very end of that game, mm. I can't remember a game as a fan, which I know is, is pitiful saying as a fan, but but that's how we are. Yeah. As a fan that wore me out like that game mm-hmm. did from the beginning to the end yeah. of it. I, um, we're drained, uh, man. We're, we're drained physically. But uh, I was proud of the offense at the end being able to – do what they need to do to win that football yeah. game to to secure it and not give Clemson's offense another chance to, to go down. Yeah, uh, the, the the drive of the game offensively for Georgia was at the very end. Uh, right, we we ran the ball pretty well then, uh, and you know it, yeah. we had to get to to you know obviously milk the clock and and get all that time off the clock. But uh, I think we saw some glimpses, especially on the offense line, or at least I did. Yeah, um, that we can run the ball. And against a very, very, very tough defensive line, uh, I saw some glimpses of uh, glimpses of hope. Uh, we got to that second level to those linebackers. Now, not necessarily all the time, but right. I started to see some glimpses. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, all the running backs look good. Uh, mm-hmm. Zamir White really had a good game. And one thing, too, Clark, is people don't realize Clemson um, – Brent Venables had his uh, – his guys playing really, really off the ball. I mean, the safety was playing twenty yards off the ball. So yeah, what uh, cover and, two defense or so? Right. So uh, like that, in in a sense. So he wasn't going to allow us to get behind them and beat us downfield. So I, Munkin's game plan, even though it looked very vanilla, mm-hmm. it, it was just basically like, well, I'm not going to run up the middle against this defensive line with Brian Brzee and uh, Miles Murphy and all those guys. So that's why I try to get, you know, guys like Cook out there with the quick little bubble screens or a mm-hmm. um, little out right in the flats, uh, Brock Bowers and everything, and just try to get some open space and and just uh, get three or four yards here and yeah, there, you yeah. know. And um, that's just, It's one of those cases. It's you, tough. It's right. tough against good defense like Clemson. That's true. And it's mm-hmm. one of those things where you just kind of take what the defense is going to give you. Uh, you know, uh Brent Venables took away the one one on one matchups on the edge. You know, we, I think we got one right. maybe with yeah. with a corner, and and that was a incomplete pass. But um, you know, I I think our offense is going to be fine. People, we don't need to overreact. Uh, and and this game coming up is going to be a good one for for them to regroup. Yeah. And to, to, we we just got to get our guys healthy, we, and it's yeah. going to take some time. We got to get healthy, and then and then get synced in. But mm-hmm. to be where we got to be at, we're not going to win games thirteen to six, no. ten to three, and win a national championship. Right. In today's day and age, we've talked about it. And no, you have to put points on the board. Yeah. So I I mean, and that, to do that, I think is you got to distinguish yourself with the elite wide receiver talent. And I, the talent's there. I guys just got to keep growing and maturing, get all the right pieces in place. And hopefully we'll see that over the next few weeks and months to come, Clark, yeah. and throughout this season is to see our receivers just grow up. These young guys come on in and, and live up to their potential. Yeah. And 
and uh, good things coming. So I'm not discouraged by the I'm offense. Not I mean, and and you would be crazy. You would be crazy, Clark, if you're sitting around after beating Dabo Sweeney's number three ranked Clemson team on opening night yeah. of the season. Thinking about the offense not putting points on the board. You're, you're, just, you're worried about the offense not putting points on the board. We just beat Clemson. Like, give me give a break, me, man. Yeah, that's just like like start start looking at a cup of water half full. You know. Yeah. That's that's it, that's what it I makes your life it. a little happier. That's right. That's at right. I mean, hey, let's just see where it goes from here. Just yeah. enjoy beating Clemson and and uh, I think what we laid out about the offense. And when you look at it from that light then it's a whole lot more understandable because that's a dang good football team that Georgia yep. just beat last yep. night. I don't care what anybody says. That was a really, really good football team. And you'll see um, to come uh, that they're going to be – they're not going to lose again. No. They're, they're not going to lose again. Good I don't heavens, they, they shouldn't. No they way. have no nah. excuse to. No. Nah. Um, and, Adam, one of the things we also talked about uh, going here with the offense, we talked about the team whose offensive line – Played the we best. We did. Would win the football game. And, and Georgia's did. And we did. Georgia's did. Yeah. Georgia's played better. Um, and, and that's without that's without uh, Tate Ratledge. Yes. Our, our, he, he, he was a star yes, for this yes. game. Um, and you had to take Warren Erickson. Who's banged up. Who's I mean, yep. banged up and move him to guard. And, you know, I mean, he played decently for for what the, the hand yep. he was dealt. Um, you know, we put him in there, and there were some times he was a little shaky. I think our offensive line, a little shaky here and there. Yep. I don't know if JT felt super comfortable in the pocket, but uh, I think I think they bought him enough, just enough time to make those quick throws. Right. You go back and watch the film. I tell you, JT, released the he releases the ball quickly on some of these mm -hmm. plays. He's very aware. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, thankfully, people, we do not – or we may, we may, but for the time being, we don't have to face that caliber of a defensive line. That's right. Uh, for the rest of this regular season. That that's right. That defensive line Clemson has in the top three. I believe oh, yeah. uh, you, you, you they, rank it Alabama, Irish, and Clemson. Sure. It, it's very elite, mm -hmm. very elite. And there was a lot of young guys playing on the offensive line last night. Okay. And like you said, I mean, that's the first series is when Ratledge goes down and Matt Luke's gonna have to shuffle some pieces right. around. So now you get to go into practice this week and play against UAB and then Carolina. Try to get some, get some guys in there and figure out who's going to be right where and uh, find that group that kind of meshes yeah. together. And, and luckily and uh, thankfully, that's a unit that we've recruited really well at the past few years uh, from Sam Pittman to Matt Luke now. Yeah. And uh, this next man up mentality there. And I, you're going to see them improve tremendously as the mm -hmm. season goes along. Yeah. And they did their job last night to win. All they that, you know. So, I mean, yes, obviously, people, we have to score points to win a national championship mm -hmm. and have to be to, to keep up with the Alabamas of the world when that comes. But that's a long time from now, Clark, if we get in that situation and play them, that, yes, we're going to have to win shootouts. But uh, but last night, all we needed was 10 points, and we got the 10 points and win it. Exactly. And we're just going to have to get better every single week. And that's, I guarantee you that's what those coaches and staff, Kirby Smart and yeah. all those guys are preaching to them. Yeah. And, I mean, they're not – that they, you know, they're going to have probably had the 24-hour rule. Enjoy mm -hmm. it, and then on the next one yeah. after that. I think there's some fans out there, I mean, just crazy people, who, who think that these coaches don't – understand that the offense isn't yeah. clicking in all cylinders right now. People, they they know more football yeah. than we all do combined, okay? So just right. pump the brakes on the offense. Let's let's just chill out. Let's enjoy this victory. Right. Um, you know, and, and get focused for for to week 2. Yes, Clark. One more thing just about the offense. I feel like JT Daniels um is is really calm and cool. Yeah. You know, I don't yeah. I don't see him just getting just rattled by. Right. It. There was one pass that I feel like uh he had a tight end streaking across the middle. And it looked like he almost hesitated, but he wasn't going to throw the ball because yeah. uh, I forgot if it was a linebacker or a DB from Clemson was was uh, coming across right to cut in the front of the tight end. Right. There would have been sure enough interception then. Yeah. And he just kind of he, he held it and pumped it, and then mm -hmm. it fell into the ground. But he, he's smart with the ball. I know he had that one interception last yeah. night, but uh, I, I really like him behind center, and I really think he's a leader out there. Mm -hmm. He's a, he's a field general and somebody who is just going to not just get overwhelmed by the football game. You right. know, it was somebody who's going to just be there and keep his composure and, and do what needs to be done, and, and he's going to get better every single week. Yeah. And everybody on that offense is going to get better as we go along. That, a huge test last night, and the game was won. Georgia's 1-0 and going into week two. And as Georgia football fans, we can't ask for any better, no. man. There's no better feeling in the world than that right there. Yeah, yeah. Love it. 
And also, I'd, I'd like to point out, you know, this isn't nothing, this isn't anything new, people. Beating That's Clemson true. is a tradition true. at the University That's of right. Georgia. That's like right. like That's Adam right. said, you know, I, three <laughs> things are for certain, death taxes and beating Clemson. I so. mean, now the overall reaction is 43-18-4. It's pretty, that's pretty lopsided. If you ask me, that's pretty lopsided, and I don't it even is. know if we should consider it, it a rivalry. Well, since the yeah, since the year two thousand, where uh, Georgia's four and one against them, yeah. four yeah. and one with that long loss in two thousand thirteen. That's it. Yeah. Well, I tell you, so, we we you know I th I think we we may see them again. Oh, we could down the road. We could, uh, and, I, and I'll be honest with you, Clark. Uh, I with the way the ACC looked opening weekend. Oh I think Clemson's a good football team. They're obviously going to win out. Yeah. But I think, honestly, I do not think that they have a opponent on the schedule to win that would be impressive enough of deserving to, to get in, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah. To be honest with you, the way the ACC is now and how they looked abysmal, hmm. top to bottom, Georgia Tech losing to Northern Illinois. The uh, the second favorite media darling, Matt Brown's North Carolina Tar Heels, looking to yeah. uh, go. They went to Blacksburg Friday night, get beat by the dang uh, Virginia Tech Hokies with Justin Fuente, who's on the hot seat up there. Duke loses to the Charlotte 49ers. <laughs> and then uh, Miami doesn't even look like they have a pulse against no, Alabama they, and Atlanta on Saturday. Yeah. So you look at it right there. It, the conference is just and, – and in the years past, they've been really good. I think you could argue they were the best conference in the nation in 2016, mm -hmm. or 15, 16, around that range. Uh, you know, so I believe um, Clemson doesn't have a, another test on the schedule. I think they will finish 11-1, and one and we'll just see if that's good enough for getting them in. But, yeah. hey, if we meet them again, let's go. Yep. Let's I'll, do it. I'll take them again. Let's do it. I'll take let's them again. I heard, and I I heard, heard, a, guys, uh, I, I heard someone say <laughs> that – from a Clemson fan say that we're going to uh, that that they are going to meet us again, and the score this time is going to be forty two ten Clemson. That's cute. That's cute. I wonder if that same per cute. person watched the same game I watched last night, because there's no way in heck that's happening. No, I'm sorry. No. Uh, I don't oh see. It. I don't see it. But well, Clemson's got a good defense. Um, you know. But Dad Gummit, so do we. That's right. You so start, do we. Hey, hey, you want to talk about the defensive side Ooh, of the football, Clark? That was, you ready to talk about the defensive side of the football? Yes, let's do it. All right, man. start us off. I where, where do you even tell begin, about Adam? I mean, we, we talked about the question mark being at uh, in our secondary. Um, obviously, we knew, we knew um, what we were getting with our front seven there on defense. I mean, where do we begin with this? I tell you what, let's let's start with a secondary let's and do pat it. them on the back, man. Yeah. How about big Christopher Smith yeah, being the MVP? Yeah. Stepping in front of that pass, that DJ Uyungle pass, I, and just running into the Charlotte Knight with it, you know. Yeah. I mean, you just sit there in the upper deck. There ain't nothing more beautiful than that That's right there. Gorgeous. Just just sitting there and you just see him jump that route, yeah. pick it off, nothing but green grass in front of him, and just carrying them, mm -hmm. carrying them them mm -hmm. 70 yards down oh, the was, field, that man. Was beautiful. And he's waited his time to get there. Mm -hmm. He got there. He made the play. A guy like Latavius Brini. Yeah. A guy who's who's flirted with the transfer transfer portal some. Mm -hmm. And he comes a back. Mere speed. Oh yeah, a mere speed, the guy who's been there way to his time yeah. and uh um darion kendrick had a good game against his former team as well and we, we talked about the secondary but golly they that you couldn't have asked for any better no. than how they did and uh yeah. so uh, they passed the test they did we talked they about did. them that being said but they shoot and yeah, they, they did it and they did it with tyke smith too without tyke so. smith yeah a big uh i believe a uh, dan jackson Mm -hmm. um, a walk-on guy came out there some when we were playing in some yeah. nickel packages look. So, Man, I uh, love it. I mean, everybody did their job on so that. Let's start with secondary, and then we're going to get to probably the stuff. best front seven in the oh, – In America. Correct, right? <laughs> <coughs> front, <laughs> that's correct again. Defensive front in America right there. Yes. Boy, and that's the Georgia Bulldogs front seven that's right it, there, man. Clark. Why don't, you, why don't you go ahead and – Tell me some of your thoughts on uh, linebacker and defensive line play from last night. I tell you, Adam, I, um, I remember you saying, I think this was our preview episode, yep. not of the Clemson game, but of the season. You said one guy that you thought would really stick out and, and would look a lot like Roquan Smith is um, N'Kobe Dean. Oh, yeah. And I tell you, Adam, he looked a heck of a lot like Roquan Smith out there last <laughs> he night. Did, didn't he? Not only, not only when he was blitzing, but he and and Channing Tindall together. 
Yeah. Good gosh almighty. Yeah. I've never seen that much yeah. speed in yeah. in a defensive backfield. Oh, yeah. It was ridiculous. And I tell you, one play, man, that just – my eyes just lit up. It was it was when I think they ran a tall sweep to the left mm-hmm. and Channing Tindall was on the other end. He was on the back side of the play. Mm-hmm. He literally made a beeline and, yeah. and tackled him in the backfield. I, I can't remember what quarter it was. But, man, that that – that gave me goosebumps. Oh yeah, it was man. just great. It's, it's beautiful to see your your linebackers there just taking care of business, um, you know, on the edge there, and then stopping the run, and and being able to drop back in coverage and defend the pass. Right, I, I tell you, Clark, uh, uh, just just bliss with riches on the front seven. Uh, like you said, Kobe Dean, he might not be as he lead as Roquan, but he yeah. is well on his way to have a junior yes. season like him. And and who knows by the end, golly, if he puts up games like he did last night. Mm. Got to uh, DJ all night, you know, recorded a couple sacks there. And um, Quay, yeah, they're right yeah. here. We, we, we could Davis. listen. We yeah. wanted to do all seven. Yeah. There's no way we could fit. Yeah, we could fit three. all seven of them. So, yeah. uh, but, uh, but yeah, Quay Walker playing that inside linebacker position too. He was real quick. Just great sideline to sideline speed on that inside linebacker group. And then Adam Anderson, my guy, I'm high on all the way. He got a sack last night, caused some pressure. Nolan Smith on that opposite side, Jack linebacker spot, did really well. He got his first sack of the night, started off, folded old DJ up yeah. in half right there. So, uh, overall, man, and then you think of the interior. I mean, the overall defensive line, of course. Trayvon Walker, all those guys are going to give them their due as well and play great. But the interior defensive line of a guy we really didn't touch a whole lot on in preseason that we should have, uh, that was criminal of us not, Jalen Carter. Yeah. Jalen Carter is a, a sophomore coming out. Great. And then, of course, Jordan Davis, obviously, and Devontae White. And, Clark, I'll be honest with you. I think this is the best interior defensive line group that George football has ever seen. I, I Look, I completely I, agree. I mean, the only other build-up bit of hype might have been around, uh, like, Marcus Stroud and Richard Seymour and them boys in the what, in the 90s. Yeah. But I, this group is better. The potential. That performance last night defensively was the best defensive performance I've seen from a Georgia unit. The only other one that you might could argue in my time and my history of watching Georgia football would be um, the, the the Sugar Bowl against Hawaii. Wow. Um, that's sad, uh, listen, but to do it against the offense like Clemson's was true. Oh, yeah. And that's saying something. Adam has been to a ton yeah. of Georgia football games, and he's stuck around with it for a while. And for him to say <sighs> that, people, I mean – and you're right against a, a, a listen, guys. I, I know Clemson's offense took a lot of flack too last night, um, and their offensive line was definitely shaky. But but I want people to know that it, I think it, people are, are asking, well, is it just is it Clemson's offensive line? They they're just that bad, or is it we're that yeah. good? I think it's we're, yeah. we're that good. We made them look that bad. Yeah, I, I think we're that good. And uh, we talked about how we needed to expose the interior offensive line of Clemson. We did that. I mean, we, we got up the middle, up the good all night, either middle linebacker blitzes or Jordan Davis, Montae Wyatt getting through the middle. Uh, they had a bad night. And I'll be honest with you, Clemson, um, you know, I, I think, honestly, they're a great football team, obviously, the okay. past few years, and they will be. But uh, they're going to have to reevaluate some stuff on the offensive side of the ball. I think uh, uh, Trevor Lawrence and Sean Watson and ETN and all the great receivers they've had in the past few years has overshadowed and covered up a bunch of um, some glaring issues along that offensive front. That old Robbie Caldwell, longtime Dabo assistant, might might be feeling some heat here coming yeah, up soon, yeah. Clark, because uh, honestly, if you look at the trend, Clemson's offensive line numbers – throughout the past few years has never been great, never been elite. Yeah. I truly think. And that, and is that where the game's changing? Yeah. Uh, you know, so um, we'll, we'll see. So I, I don't know. I think uh, – but I, I agree. They're going to look good. Clemson's going to be a good offensive football team this year. Uyungle is a good quarterback. And people are already talking, writing him off. But yeah. hey, but you're right, Clark. Georgia's defense is just that elite. Yeah. So if we keep improving even more every mm-hmm. week and stay healthy, yeah. stay healthy, get Taki back and stay healthy, man, there's some special things to come. Yeah. Special I, things to come. I tell you, one thing, uh, going back to secondary mm-hmm. here a little bit, and our linebackers, one thing yeah. I saw that really, really impressed me was our open field tackling last night. Uh, yeah. There were multiple plays where it could have been a 10-yard game, 15, 20. That's where those mm-hmm. explosive plays mm-hmm. happen. Mm-hmm. But we got guys who can make a solo ta- a tackle in yeah, open space, up. 
people that right down is, the wrap up. that's it that's critical that's critical because because when you start playing those Alabamas of the world, mm -hmm. you got to have guys that can do that because sometimes they're going to be left on an island and they got to make a play. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, there were some we missed we could get better at, but overall, yeah. a whole lot better than what we've seen in the past. And you're right, Clark, right. on some pivotal times when it was one on one mm -hmm. where there was nothing but green grass in front of uh, guys like Justin Ross or um, Nagata or uh, uh, Galloway, then uh, we, we made some tackles, some, especially out of the defensive back yeah. group. I yeah. like Latavius bringing you some of those guys. So. He had a heck of a game. Ah, man. It was great. It was exciting. Yeah. I'm telling you. So, I don't know. Going from here, we're going, we're just going, we're going to see. Mm -hmm. We're going to see. But boy, just couldn't be any more proud of our defensive unit. Uh, I, I want to just point out Trey Scott. Defensive yeah. line coach. Um, I, I think he's caught a lot of heat the past few years. Mm -hmm. People talking about recruiting at a level or um, a development. Um, I, I, fans saying that, and um, you can't question that now. Mm -hmm. So uh, just big shout out and props, Coach Trey Scott yeah. and all all the coaches. I was about staff, to say, I, real, all the coaches. Give staff, Dan Lanning, and and yeah, Schumann too. Give these guys a freaking raise. Don't let them go away from Georgia. That's they're, right. I mean, you're right. They're they're good recruiters too, man. And yeah. now they have shown with because they've been here long enough to have developed their players. The players mm -hmm. that you're seeing on the field now, y'all, are their players. Yeah. They're the ones that they developed. Yeah. And we got to give them some love. I, I think they are just all all of those defensive guys are um great head not head coaches. Great coaches. Oh, they're um, gonna be good head coaches. They will be eventually, yeah. I'm telling but, you, man. I, I it's it's amazing though. Um, I, I I'm afraid we're gonna lose Dan Lannon after this year. Oh, uh, I mean get, yeah. and I mean that's what comes with success that's in the true. program is that's um true. is that happening, you know, good coaches going on and you just gotta just keep reloading. But well we'll, we'll see. But I, right now I think we're set up for a very special year. Mm -hmm. the, the, we've talked about it. The schedule sets up. So winning that game last night was huge and the momentum and you could just see from the video you saw in the locker room, the mm -hmm. post game videos. It was just, I mean, the momentum and I think the spark mm. that's going to set in this football team yeah. is going to be just uh, just amazing to see going forward. And that's something that's going to carry you throughout the whole season, I think. Because nah. you're right, we got the monkey off our back, and um, I, I don't want to say it's going to be smooth sailing from here. Yeah. But – Oh, it's yeah. going to be smooth sailing for me. Oh, it's going to be, I think, yeah. It's, it, it, I, I think it is. Um, I'm, I'm starting to honestly get worried. And we'll, we'll talk about this later when we get there. But uh, Auburn at Auburn and Opelika, yeah. that uh, that could be a tough one. And, I mean, it's the SEC. You never know um, from week to week. That's why we love college football so much. But right now, it's looking good. Just uh, yeah. just stay healthy. Right. Just stay healthy. Keep getting more discipline out there. Eliminate right. penalties. Clean up game. And getting in the swing of things in the season – and uh, keep getting better every week of practice, and the sky's the limit for this group all the way around, yeah. all the way around. But the defense is elite. Um, it's up there with Alabama, as I think is the top – one of the top two defenses in college football right now. 100%. Absolutely. 100%. And, um, i tell you another uh, – so let's transition here, Adam. Another team on the field that we got to see last night was our mm -hmm. special teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And my gosh almighty, we have a freaking punter on our hands, people. <laughs> That is a weapon. I said it. I said it on our season preview. I said Jake Camarda is a weapon. And sure enough, uh, he proved that last night, especially in that first quarter. Yeah. I think we we downed the ball both times within the 10 or close oh, to the 10. We did. 10. Yeah, it was inside the 10. And uh, you know, that pays dividends. People field position um yes. makes a huge difference in big ball games like that. It means you get the ball closer to uh their end zone to score. So um, you know. Special teams, I thought was great last night. Will yeah. Muschamp, I think he's done an excellent job stepping yeah. in uh, for Scott Cochran. Um, what do you think? I, yeah, I think so too, Clark. Like you said, Kamara did great, and especially in a game like that where both offenses are struggling, mm -hmm. field position is is huge in that. Yeah. I mean, he he stepped up and did what needed to be done. Um, obviously, we had the turnover, yeah. um, returning the punt. At the universal word is Peter, 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 and everybody in the stands yelling and thinking like you learned that in recreation yeah. football. <laughs> when you hear that word, or, or like, just go away, yeah. run to the sideline, get away. But you know, I mean, it's the heat of the moment. Right. Not sure what was going through uh, Kendall Milton's head right yeah. there, yeah. and uh, you'll, you'll have that that kind of stuff happens. Even though you're, you're thinking, golly, that's something you learn at such a your young football yeah. career with yeah. that. How could that? But I, I, touching on that, though, Clark, after two turnovers, 
you turn over and give Clemson good field position two times in that game. The way our defense and the whole team overall, the whole team overall, the offense coming back out or uh, and everything responded to adversity, hitting them yeah. right in the face. It's Man, phenomenal. phenomenal. And that's attributed to leadership and confidence yeah. instilled by that coaching staff and some of the, the upperclassmen and the big-time leaders in this team, just knowing that even though uh, something didn't go our way, we're not going to point fingers. We're just going to go out there. We're going to do our job and take care of business, and that's what they did. Yeah, That's what they yeah. did. Yeah. So um, That, that they, is a uh, – that's a telltale sign that you've got some leadership in that locker room because we didn't flinch last night, people. I really I, – I don't think at any point in the game did I feel like, man, our guys don't believe in themselves anymore. Right. I just didn't – I didn't see that. I really didn't. Now, no. I did see that in Clemson only one time, and I, that was at the very end when we just pounded it down their throats. We let them know yeah. that we're joining that, 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 And we can still yeah. run the ball. So That's what it but, is, man. That's where you want to get at is yeah. when you can impose your will at the end of the game and the other defense – and the defense oh, is just helpless. Right. And helpless. They can't stop you. And that, yeah. that's what Kirby Smart loves more than anything. <laughs> that game last night what was Kirby Smart's all about. I can tell you that right now. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I think special teams all around look good. And, you know, Jack yeah. Pod, he did miss that first one. Mm -hmm. uh, got a little antsy there. Yeah, first, had, first, first. I did. I, it the just of the year. Yeah, so. yeah and, and you know, I know that's a lot um, tougher of a job. I think he may have been watching the Dr Pepper. You know how they kick the yeah, field goal and yeah. see win hundred thousand dollars, whatever. He saw that guy and he just absolutely yeah. bless his heart. He just shanked it. I don't know how any normal human being can go out there and, and hit a. Uh, 40-yard field goal. Yeah, that that's what boy, they had it at, 40 yards. That boy doing the contest, trying to win him a new 2021 Chevy Silverado, oh, yeah. just he, he might have kicked it five yards. <laughs> might have been five yards. You, you know, he had had to have been practicing that. Oh, he he probably went out to the his local high school football field. Just oh, yeah. Rep, and rep. On the and tee, rep. too. On the tee. But I, could, I already knew when he started to step back, he he didn't have he just did, somebody way. with a normal leg that you, you need to at least get a good 20-yard head start. And even if you just – your feet come out from under and you land on your tail in Charlie Brown style or whatever. At least that shows you're giving effort, <laughs> not just stepping back two feet and going up and kicking oh, it man. and embarrassing yourself in front of 70,000 plus. But oh, gosh. I couldn't have done any better. No, I couldn't have either. But Jack oh, Pod did redeem himself there with a big three points. Yeah, he and, did. Uh, oh, man, it's uh, – I, I think kickoff looked good. I think kick return looked good. Mm-hmm. I mm -hmm. think punt return other than the the muff. Um I think we will see this in the future. We're going to see we're going to see some special teams touchdowns. I really believe that. Um oh, we're yeah. going to see some kick re kicks return and some punts. Oh yeah, um, uh, one of those uh, about blocked a punt last night yeah, too. Yeah. I mean, we're very close to. And that would have been huge. Mm -hmm. Um so overall, I mean, and you talked about it last episode Clark is going to have to have a good special teams play. Yeah. And uh control time of possession and do that too and right. I know that's that's what we did. Yeah, that's what we did. So, Adam, before we move on to UAB, is there anything else that just stood out to you about this game? Let me let me talk. Let me mention mine first. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. I do think um, one important thing that a lot of people may have missed: we had eight. I, if my count is correct, we had eight freshmen, whether that was wow. true freshmen or red shirt, who stepped on yep. out on that field last night. Some of them made a big impact. Some of yeah. them, uh, you know. Got us some yards here and there, but eight, eight, and in, in a game like wow. that, guys, that's Man. pivotal. Yeah, uh, that's that's crucial for their development and their growth uh, to get that experience at that high of a level of a football game. It's good stuff. Anything mm. else like that? Uh, yeah, Clark. I mean, that that's amazing. You think about that top five matchup. Uh, redshirt freshman, and then also you got to talk about that maybe even just true freshman from last year that played played in environments that were uh, limited capacity stadiums the whole year. So this was truly their first big game environment. Yep. And from a fan's perspective, getting back to that, man, felt so good. I, I don't remember a more electric entrance into a stadium than when we were piling in uh, Bank of America Stadium. I mean, Clemson fans, everybody was hyped. You could tell everybody had been waiting on this for just escape from what was going on in their lives and what the world has going on out there to just be able to a couple hours to watch their favorite football team play with a, a bunch of other like-minded individuals. So well, well, that's what was exciting and, and what got me first in the adrenaline rush. And then seeing our guys come out there and do what they did, um, amazing. And like I said, the freshmen being able to come in there it's that Brock Bowers. Oh Brock Bowers. Uh, I, I think you're going to see him play more of a slot receiver type yeah. when uh, Darnell's back. 
And uh, shoot, if Eric Gilbert comes back, I mean, we don't know what's going to happen there, but he comes back there. I mean, the possibilities are endless with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that, you know, that going back to offense, just touching on it, just a hair, but that opens up your playbook when you get those guys who who can yeah. can go downfield, straight downfield, and get open. That changes everything, people, and that's what we didn't really get that last night. No, no, we we didn't. We uh, we didn't. And um, uh, overall, though, I mean, that's what people and what we're really trying to point out when we're reviewing the game last night on the offensive side of the football. The defense is perfect. And obviously, yes, we have to get better. Yeah. We've said that. We're not going to make excuses that and just pump sunshine like everything's just great. Yeah. But instead of just raising cane about it and saying our offense sucks, this or that, same old, same old, JT Daniels is terrible – you know, fire Todd Monk and stuff like that. Be realistic about it. Mm-hmm. Understand the defense and the personnel that they were facing and the limited personnel on our side not being at full strength and the guys that are, like you said, Clark, uh, freshmen and the majority of the freshmen that played are on the offensive side of the football and that type of guys and then try to understand what Monk was trying to do, that there really wasn't a game plan that yeah. you could establish of attacking. It was really just – trying to get guys in open space and create something and make it happen with what Venables offered on the defensive side of the ball. It's just tough on an offense, and uh, and Clemson fans will tell you the same thing after what they saw, mm-hmm. is when um, when your base uh, defensive line can constantly get pressure all night without sending any extra guys home. Three people? Well, it's three people, then – then it's a long night for it any is. team, yeah. any team again. So, uh, I, I, Todd Monken's great. You're going to see a lot of good things out of the offense this mm-hmm. year. And yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to keep on rolling, keep on getting better, yeah. keep on getting better. And the defense, sky's the limit for a record year with them. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Just right. stay healthy, Clark. Yes. Just stay yes. healthy. Yes. Everybody just stay healthy. Pray to the good Lord. Yep. Go to practice and just, just wrap yourself up in bubble wrap every time. <laughs> in between then, every time, just keep our boys healthy. Keep our boys healthy. Just old lady luck just needs to smile down with us on the injury front. Yeah. Just just do that. We we need a year where we don't just lose anybody pitiful like that. So knock on wood, we're just gonna keep on That's it. keep on rolling yeah. with it. But man, what a fun night. What a fun was, night, a historic night. Uh Kirby's beating Dabo. George is beating Clemson, and uh, we got bragging rights from the guys across Lake Hartwell that's now. That's it. That's so, it. Uh, at least for, you that's know, right. for a few months. That's right, Clark. And I say we're going to be the number two team in the nation when the I polls hope. come out after this weekend. I hope you're uh, right. So I, I don't see why it wouldn't be. And beat the number three team in the nation. We were number five. Uh, Oklahoma looks suspect. Ohio mm-hmm. State at times looks suspect. So yeah. Yeah. beat Clemson, number two. That's I mean. It. That's it. Let's do it. Let's Fun times ahead. Everybody get excited about it. Yeah. Get excited about That's it. Man, it. we're blessed. Gosh. Gosh. Well, that uh, I think that wraps it up for the Clemson game. Yeah. Let's transition to this week, this Saturday, 3.30 uh, p.m. in Sanford Stadium. Coming home. Mm-hmm. First game at uh, Sanford. It's going to be fun, Adam. I, I can't wait. Oh yeah, it's gonna be fun. First, uh, first time since 2019 that you get a full 92,000 people yes, in Sanford. Yes, yes. Give a clap for that, Yay. man. That's exciting. That's exciting. Hope everybody's gonna be in attendance for that. You know, uh, the guys, you uh, season ticket holders didn't see sit in their regular season tickets uh, last yeah. year, so you couldn't see the family that you right. see every fall. So we're gonna have a good family reunion. See all the boys up near row 60. Oh yeah, uh, it's gonna be exciting about that. Yep. So yeah, 30 30. Hopefully the old fall breeze keeps on yes, going, Clark. Yes, it yes. feels a good autumn day. You know, mm-hmm. we're going to get a little tailgating in. Mm-hmm. And uh, nothing like a Saturday in the fall in Athens, Georgia. Sure. Reflect on a big win last week. Talk about the potential. Number two team of the nation, man. I mean, golly. Yeah. What, what more could you want? What more could that. you want than that? Man, yeah, just thinking yeah. about that. So, ah, right, let's I'll talk you, about the game. I tell you who's going to be there too, Adam. Is who's that? Pam Wilcox and her husband. Yes, sir. Do want to shout them out. Mm-hmm. Uh, they won our ticket giveaway. Yeah. They've never been to a Georgia football game. So we wanted to uh, give them this opportunity. Awesome. And, and we're, we're going to see them uh, at the game. They're actually going to be sitting a couple – not in row 60, but a couple rows below us there. Yeah, so. same section. So. Yeah, same section. So Good deal. Yeah. Good deal. That's exciting. That's what oh, yeah. it's about. It's That's bringing it. the experience to people who hadn't um, had the pleasure to come. That's right. Be a part of it. So we we got some other plans for some giveaways, uh, other stuff we talked about tonight actually, and some more ticket opportunities yep. in the future. So yep. everybody, be sure to tune in and stay tuned in That's to that. It. So do UAB. The Blazers are coming into Athens. Adam, you got any fun facts about UAB? UAB Blazers, yes, the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Uh-huh. 
Um, first off, let's say the Georgia versus UAB history. They've met two times in uh, 2003 and 2006. Uh, 2006, I believe, was 34 um, nothing. A rough year for Georgia football, mm. but that was a, a bright spot in it. Yep. Um, 2003, <laughs> though, actually – was a scare. A good Mark Rick football team led by junior David Green and uh, David Pollock. I uh, only beat them 16-13 to 13 that mm-hmm. afternoon in Athens. So those are the only two meetings. Uh, UAB is a well, well, well coached football team. Bill Clark has been their head coach since 2014. You see him on a lot of hot boards for coaching candidates. I think you will see him at a uh, job, a higher job here soon, you know, one of these elite level head coaching jobs. Yeah. For the past few years, he's been there. Um, the program got shut down. Uh, I don't know the whole story, but a lot of the Alabama Board of Regents, I believe it was, mm-hmm. some of the big, actually, guys in Tuscaloosa, some of the uh, the big wigs up there didn't really like UAB having a football program, from my understanding. So it took a two-year hiatus, um, 15, 16. That's how we got Jake Gaines, yeah, who transferred in, a linebacker we had during the 15 season. Yep. Um, uh, and then they come back. And 17, Bill Clark's still the coach. So, and I mean, you go through the emotions of getting your football program shut down, mm-hmm. then getting them back, then wins a conference USA championship in 18, and then during 20. the COVID year, wins yep. one in 20. So their uh, their starting quarterback, um, Tyler Johnston, I believe now Clark is the only quarterback in Division One returning this year who has two conference championship wins under his belt as a starting Dang. quarterback. Uh, that's that's what I heard. They uh, they actually they played played last Wednesday to open up the season against Jacksonville State and uh, uh, yep yep <laughs> yeah uh, Montgomery Bowl. Both teams, of course, from Alabama. So they've had plenty of rest since that game mm-hmm. for us. And uh, it's a well coached football team. I think you're going to expect a well coached undermatched team. Obviously, uh, they're not going to have the uh, the size and the speed yeah. um, or the the talent, but still. When they're well coached and disciplined like that, anything can happen. So, mm-hmm. and that's what Kirby's going to be preaching. Oh, of course, yeah, he yeah. was talking about it last night in the interview afterwards. So, there's no doubt our guys are going to be ready. I, I I don't expect a just a letdown yeah, clearly after yeah. last week. Right, so, right. Um, that's it on the UAB Blazers. Yeah, I think it's a good game uh, to come off a game like Clemson. Uh, that way, you get your. Yeah. You know, I, I think this is one of those those games where you can really uh, get something going offensively. Hopefully. Hopefully yep. we see yep. our offense pick up a little bit more and uh, we we open the field and, uh, you know, get it to some playmakers and get some guys rotated in and out. You know, so I, I'm sure we'll have some recruits there uh, and, and show them what we can do offensively and then defensively, mm-hmm. you know, just, just do what we do. I think so, Clark. I'm excited about it, man. Yeah. It's going to be a good day. I think one thing, too, to help with the possible potential after a big game like that mm-hmm. uh, um, and then avoiding a letdown the next week, is the fact that a lot of these guys have never been, including JT Daniels, in a full Sanford yeah, Stadium. Yeah. So you're going to have that to look forward to. It's going to be an exciting day. Um, I, w- I do think the UAB Blazers is going to score more points on our defense than the uh, Clemson Tigers. <laughs> wow. I think uh, I think it's going to be 45 to six Georgia. Mm. I think I get two field goals. Okay, 45 six. And garbage like, time. Like, so that's going to yeah. be my call. 45 to six yeah. offense yeah. clicks. Uh, and uh, man, just what the doctor ordered for the yeah. offense this mm-hmm. week. Mm-hmm. So I'm, go, I'm excited. If we're doing score predictions. Give a score now, prediction. I'll get. I'll do. I'm gonna say 41. Ooh, you know what? I'm gonna go 41-3. All right, I like it. I'm gonna go I like it. Three. I like. I it. think yeah, one one field goal, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. our offense is gonna start lighting it up. Good deal. Hey, I love it, man. I love it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, let's go, Adam, to our pick 'em uh, last okay. week. I think we did. Uh, we did okay. Uh, yeah. One one game has yet to be played. That's right. The Louisville Ole Miss game. Yep. And we're so, currently watching Notre Dame, Florida State. Yes. Yes. Looks so, like uh, Notre Dame's probably going to come out with a win. Notre Dame. Yeah, and we both picked that then. So. And Good then uh, our Southern Miss, uh, South Alabama, Adam. The game of the week. Yeah. yeah. The, the game of the week last week. South Alabama, the crushed Jags. Them. I mean, I'm telling you, crushed them. The Jags are building a program down there in South Alabama. Old Major Applewhite and that offense. You, you got to watch out for them. Interesting. UAB needs to watch out for them because they're coming. <laughs> they're coming. Oh my gosh. Mm. Well, let's start with the big one: uh, Oregon at Ohio State. Yeah. And Adam, this is weird. This is a noon kickoff. Yeah, I guess that uh, Fox Big Ten contract deal. I'm assuming where their primetime yeah. games are. 
That's the only sense I can make of it. Yeah, not a lot of just exciting games in week two. Usually you get some marquee matchups in week one, and then mm -hmm. you get your directional school games, if you will, yeah. the next week. Yeah. Uh, wait, so that's where we're at with this. So, um, even though Ohio State uh, didn't didn't um look great against Minnesota last Thursday night. Oregon looked very pedestrian against Fresno State as well. They didn't cover. I mm -hmm. uh, had to just put them away late in the game. Yeah. And it's going to be in Columbus. I think C.J. Stroud um, will bounce back against Oregon. I think Ohio State's going to win. It. And I don't really think it's going to be a game, Clark. I, I think, think Ohio State's going to get the best of them pretty pretty well. Yeah. By a few I, possessions. You know, I liked what I saw the at the tail end of the Ohio State game. I watched most of it. But – um, you know, yeah, you're right, C.J. Stroud. They got the run game going. Their yep. defense started to look a lot better. They started to make plays. Uh, I think you're right. I think Ohio State um, not not necessarily blows them out, but I think it's going to be about a 10, 14-point victory there for, for the Buckeyes. And, you know, Adam, I think, too, uh, Ohio State, uh, this is a big one for them, obviously, but, mm -hmm. man, you, you can't drop a game like this if you're expecting to make it into the playoffs. Uh, yep. You, you got to win these games. You, yep. you got to win the big games, uh, and like we did, like we did this past Saturday night. That's right. You know, That's so, right. So, I heard that. Good deal. And, and let me ask you this. While we're talking about other conferences, other teams. Yeah. What's best for Georgia? Um, well, obviously, we need to just win out. We yeah. need to win out. We'll, we'll punch your ticket in. But, if you know, does it help us to have more undefeated teams, whether it be Notre Dame, whether it be Ohio State, Oklahoma, does it help us for those teams to be undefeated? Um, and and to maybe keep a Clemson out. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, I, I do not want Clemson to be in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. I, I I mean we'll, we play them again, but it wouldn't yeah. be my first choice to play them no, again. No. And for the simple fact too is the body of work and their resume of how the ACC is that we talked about earlier going forward. There's just nothing playoff deserving mm -hmm. with one loss. No. There. I honestly think uh, Oklahoma or an Ohio State would have a better argument with one loss than Clemson yeah. right now. Yeah. So um, I, I don't know. Um, I believe um, I believe it's going to be something that it's just going to boil down to either way is if you go into the SEC championship undefeated uh, and say you're facing Alabama who's undefeated, both are going to be in automatically. Yeah. I truly think that. And then uh, you only margin of error can be one loss during the regular season, and then you got to win the SEC championship. It's not going to be yeah. one loss in the regular season, one loss in the SEC, and then losing the SEC championship. Not a two-loss team won't make it in. So let's just take care of our business. Right. And I think beating Clemson was huge. Mm -hmm. Beating Clemson was huge. We still have our mulligan. Yes, that will be – I don't think there will be a regular season win by any team out there that will be – as big on for the committee to look at than ours against Clemson yep, week one. That's right. So just keep on rolling yep, with it. Yep, and yep, yep. Uh, dang fine position this group's in, man. Oh, yeah. You just don't get complacent about it. But yeah. I don't know, Clark. I mean, what, what do you think about it? I still am going with my scenario, what I predict in the playoff. I do believe it's going to be Georgia out. No particular order with this. Just Georgia, Alabama, Oklahoma, and Ohio State. Even though Oklahoma looks suspect, I still think they're going to cruise through. Yeah. I th mm. I don't know. I, I I don't know. I don't know if Clemson does get in there. I, I don't. There's think just they a lot of football Florida. to be played. This is the year they're out of it. I mean, so? they're, yes, they're still a great football. Yeah, team. they are. They are. We're but, not discrediting. But them. losing to us week one will be the only like the only thing that I, I just don't think. I mean, you would have to have one of the teams I mentioned lose two mm -hmm. for that argument. But yeah. I I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see play out. The good thing is, though, like you said, we own the head-to-head -head against Clemson. Yes. So if it does come down to it, you know, right. if we go to Atlanta and, and were to lose to a SEC West opponent, then, you know, we got the head-to-head -head against Clemson. Great point, Clark. So. Great point. That Because that, that's a scenario that could have played out when right. you got three potential ACC, uh, Big 12, Big 10 champions that are either undefeated or one loss, multiple ones on one loss. And you have to have one more spot, and we had just lost, and and it is with the committee losing early uh, favors well, so losing late you get punished more, and mm -hmm. we would have been in that losing late category. But you factor in the head to head, yeah, man, yeah, there you go, helps. huge, All right. huge, man. So let's go back to our pick 'em here. Um, mm -hmm. Next game on our list of games to pick: Mizzou at Kentucky. Adam, who do you like in this? Uh, one? This is the fight, I believe, for third. 
hopefully second. I would. Yeah. I, I hope that one of them or both of them, both of them actually beat Florida. Yeah. But realistically, I think for third in the SEC East mm-hmm. is going to be the winner of this game. It is in uh, – is that Kroger Field in um, Lexington? Yeah. Uh, I, I like Kentucky, man. I really think they're going to beat them. Um, I think Mark Stoops is a very solid coach, one of the most underrated coaches in the game. They got a quarterback and the Levis kid up there, a uh, new offense coordinator, established air raid offense. Uh, Missouri looks suspect against Central Michigan, only beat them by 10. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, it's a great game. I'm going to look forward to actually watching this game because yeah. it is very intriguing. But Kentucky at home field, some momentum off week one with the new pieces they got in place. Uh, let's go Kentucky. All right. Kentucky. I like it. I like it. I hate to just agree with you on that, on yeah, all these, no, but I, I mean, I you know, I, I, I like Kentucky too. Uh, yeah. Same reasons you just mentioned there. So let's move on. Texas at Arkansas. Oh, our boy Sam Pittman. Yeah. And Fayetteville. He's got the old horns coming in. Yeah. Ah, right, Clark, what what you think? Go ahead and pick this one first, bro. You know, I ooh. I wanna I wanna stay with the SEC. I love Sam Pittman. He's just a great human being in general. Yeah. I loved his little uh what what did he do with in front of the video? The, the little pop-up. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Yes, 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 I love yeah. that. But uh Man, I, I like Steve Sarkeesian um, at yeah. Texas. I think he's going to do a good job there. Uh, that They looked okay week one there. Uh, yeah, so, I, yeah. I mean, shoot, they beat a uh, – soundly beat a Louisiana team that yeah. was ranked 23rd right. in about 20 points or so. Yeah. So, yeah. The quarterback looked good from what I saw. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I'm going to go with Texas. I'm going to go with the Longhorns going into Arkansas and getting the win. Uh, I agree with you. I just uh, – I'm not high – on the Arkansas program. Yeah. I'm not. I mean, I, Sam Pittman's doing great, and there's a lot of work to be doing there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the expectation level that I've heard people talk about in Fayetteville for this year is not going to be achieved. Yeah. And that's no no reflection on Sam Pittman no, whatsoever. No. I think it's just going to take more time. Right. going right. to take more time. So uh, I hope Arkansas does pull it off, but I'm going with Texas as well, Clark. Yeah. So yeah. what's the next game on the slate? Next one, Iowa at Iowa State. This ought to be a really good one. Um and both teams won. won yeah. Won. But Iowa State play. Yeah, Iowa State barely won against Northern Iowa. Oh, that's right. Northern yeah. Iowa is a team who historically upsets Iowa or Iowa State during <laughs> their season. <laughs> but Iowa State barely beat them. They, well, they held them off there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Iowa smoked Indiana. Yeah. So, um, Iowa's won seven straight games. Iowa State is a darling in the Big 12. But, you know, kind of a kind of a pick that's out there that people are actually putting in the playoff. To beat Oklahoma, Iowa State, yeah. it is Iowa I've, State. I've seen some of those. I, I'm going to go ahead, Clark, and, and say Iowa State's lost five straight mm-hmm. to Iowa, and uh, they didn't play last year because of COVID and the conference stuff, and they're not in the same conference. Yeah, uh, I think Iowa beats them again. Like um, Kirk Ferentz is a great coach, been there a long time. So is Matt Campbell, but – I think old Kirk Ferentz, sometimes a coach just has a team's number. Yeah. And Kirk yeah. Ferentz has the Iowa State Cyclones number. There you go. So I'm going with the Hawkeyes. Yeah. Hawkeyes by 10. Dang. Is that game in Ames? That game is in yeah. Ames. It's in Iowa mm-hmm. State. Uh, oh, they're going on the road and beating them. Like Give me the Hawkeyes. I tell you, the <laughs> only reason I'm, I'm picking, I don't know much about either two of these Rough. teams. <laughs> oh, no, you're good. Um, the, really, the only thing. Um, that I've seen from these two teams uh, from this year. It, has, it hasn't been a lot, but what I will say, I love the Hawkeyes. I just love their colors. I mentioned yeah. that before. If I had to pull for another team in college football, I guess, I guess it'd be Iowa. But yeah. now, all that to say, all that to say, I just love their colors. I love, mm-hmm. the, I love the helmets, the uniforms. They just look good. Iowa, I'm going with Iowa. You're going with the Hawkeyes, too. I, I love it. I'm sorry. It. I we, love need, it. We, I need love to, we need to pick nah, hey, ones. Look, but, Greg know. Minus think a lot. Yeah, that's, that's all I right. can say about it, man. Well, Adam, we may differ in this one right here. The game, the game of the week. Hampton mm-hmm. versus Old Dominion. Adam, <laughs> yes. I couldn't tell you where yeah, these two teams are located. Hey. I have no idea where. If you told me to drop a pin on a U.S. map, I couldn't. I don't think I'd become close. I think Old Dominion could possibly be in Virginia. Hey, comment, comment if you yes, know. Please. Don't use the Google machine. No, just no, comment. Cheap. Don't don't use the Google machine. Yeah. Just comment if off the top of your head you know where Hampton or Old <laughs> Dominion is. I kind of I want to go with Old Dominion possibly being in Virginia. Yes, yeah, they've upstate Virginia Tech in the past. Yeah, um, the Lions. Yes, and the Hampton Pirates. Yeah, I don't know where Hampton is. I don't. Uh-uh. I don't. But I tell you, I I, I got a feeling. I 
couldn't tell you the last time I've watched either one of these two teams play. Yeah. I got a feeling it's going to be a barn burner. Really? Yeah. Just a, <laughs> it's just a really. Just an, an instant classic, Adam. Is this game at Old Dominion? Is that where we think it is? All right. I have no all idea. Right, is that Old Dominion? Old Dominion. All, we'll right, all, right, all, right, all right, you're going to go with Old Dominion. I think I'm going to go with Old Dominion, the Lions roar wherever they're playing. I think my heart tells me to go with Old Dominion as well, Clark. Really? I, I'm just not big on the Hampton Pirates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just think Old Dominion has more more experience on the offensive <laughs> side of the football. <laughs> Hampton's too young. They're about a year away. <laughs> They're a year away, a year away. Hampton is a year away from making some noise. So give me the <laughs> <laughs> give me the lines of Old Dominion. Give me the lines oh, of Old Dominion by two touchdowns. Oh. That's a, I think that's a seven o'clock game too. So we get home in time for that one from the UAB game. At least at least hit the TiVo button on it, record it. So give me Old Dominion. I love it. What conferences do these teams even play in? I mean, I don't know. I'd be honest with you. I really oh, do not know. I really don't. But this uh, is Row 60's Game of the Week. Yep. Everybody check it out. Tune in. Yep. Get the ratings up for these yep. two schools. Your, support them. Your TV, your TV being turned on to that game will make a hey, difference look, in the ratings. That's hey, a significant see one. See where it could be viewed at for our viewers. Yeah, let, give me a second here. Adam, talk for a second. I, well, it might hurt our show spend so much time on the Old Dominion Hampton game. But I think people will appreciate it. Oh, yeah. I uh, think people will appreciate it. Uh, Old Dominion uh, Old Dominion Hampton. Ham, uh, There's not even – you don't even get, like, Oh, the, yeah, uh, there is no talking about when the game is played. Oh, right, here we go. Oh, here we go. Oh, that's that's the that's women's, mask, that's women's, women's basketball. basketball. Old Dominion you know killed Hampton in the <laughs> seventy-five and thirty-eight. Good lord! All right, I don't know. Just 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 Google it. And you can figure out when Old Dominion and Hampton play. <laughs> All right, so All we're right. gonna move on the dogs now. Then. I think we already gave us a score prediction for UAB. <laughs> yeah, I was a little premature on that, but I'm sticking with 45 to six. Two field goals in garbage time for the Blazers. They don't quite punch it in. We have a stand. We have a stand. They're just gonna hit a couple chip shots. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're in garbage time. We're gonna get fired up. We're gonna get fired up <laughs> get about fired that. Up. So yeah. it's gonna be a fun afternoon in Athens. Good game that I like to say, and we are to, to bring the women and the children too. Oh yeah, yeah. it's a good comfortable game. This is what I call family game. That you could go. You can bring the children. You can bring, you know, a woman that you might be courting or so, and you don't want to run her off during a big game. This is one that you're maybe not going to necessarily get too just jacked up and lose your voice about. You kind of just – you can enjoy the finer things and relax and not just be so worked up like last night was. So I, I would call this game the one that to bring – if you are thinking about bringing any women or any children to the football game, this is one to bring them to, Clark. Oh, man. You can tailgate at this one. Yeah, eat some. Yeah, what eat what, some. What, what what would be a good tailgate food for a three thirty kickoff, Adam? I mean, what's <sighs> what is what is your mother? What are our mothers going to take to the, this one? I think we're going to mix it up from the Chick Fil A chicken nuggets. Just go around. Yeah, um, uh, we could order a pizza from Domino's. Get a little curbside delivery up yeah, there yeah. at the old Energy Light, but um. I don't know, Clark. Honestly, we were, we hadn't touched on, but we're gonna change the menu up for this. One. <laughs> we might have to get some high seeds juice boxes out there for the children because we we got children coming with us at this game, so we might have to get some high seed juice boxes, some animal crackers on this one. <laughs> so, uh, oh man, that's what we're going with. Jeez, Louise, we'll we are rolling. I mean, we're just. I love this. This is a good time. <laughs> right here. Oh, we're just elated. We got sore we're, voice, and we're yeah. just elated. We're just still floating on a cloud because yes. the dogs did it, baby. Ooh. 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 Yeah, get fired up, baby. I we're going you. national championship. <laughs> you're you're calling it. Oh, right now. <laughs> yeah, right now. We're just, uh, there's nothing like going to work and realizing. We're still in contention. Yes. There's nothing like that. And, and we control our own season. destiny. Yes, baby. you control your own destiny. It just makes life that much more oh. enjoyable. Man. I tell you, my we're good. My bark right now is just like Oh, my vocal cords. Dude, I'm just, I'm just oh man. I'm exhausted. Well, somehow we made it through the, the end of this show. Up. Yep. We're there. We're there. Oh man. Well, next Wednesday, we will have another one of these bad boys. You dab it come right, we will. And we hopefully will be 2-0 and on the season. That's undefeated. right. Sitting at number that's two. That's right. That's right. Golly. Yep, yep, that's it, Clark. Uh, we're going to be – we are going to be number two. I'm calling that. 
So everybody, get you some tickets. Come out to Athens Saturday afternoon. Yep. Come find us. Rose 60 uh, We'll section. let you know where we're at yep. um, as far as tailgating as well. Oh, yeah. But we'll be at Section 108, Row 60, um, on the south, or the, excuse me, the north side of Sanford Stadium. Come see us. Come say go dogs to us. Uh, man, it's the best time of year, and we're rolling. We got a good football team, boys and girls. Enjoy it. Uh, hey, leave a rating on our podcast. Yes. On, uh, give us a like on YouTube. Follow us on every platform that helps with us. Uh, we'd love to hear feedback from you. Let us know what you think about the old Dominion Hampton game. Yeah, that's what we really want to know about. So, so let's do it. Yeah. Well, thank you for tuning in. Go dogs, Adam! Give us one more bark right here. All right, guys. Well, yes, we're going to do this right here. All right. We beat them, and we said we were going to put. It wasn't Adam Anderson sack, but we said last episode there was going to be a sack on that barker board right there. By gosh, it is. And Dabo Sweeney, a lot of football left to play, but we're in good position. Get excited about it. Go get a hey, go to the office on Tuesday because we got Monday, or or go just go to the office and just. Get excited talking about it with everybody and uh, any Clemson fans. Be humble about it. Oh, yeah. This is this is business. This is normal. This is normal. But yep. got the Blazers coming up. Let's go. Go dogs. Sick. Oh 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 oh.